Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Andres, and today I'll be showing you how to build the FTC Angel based on the Porco Rosso film. So this plane flies off the Power Pack C, and we like to use a 9-inch prop with that to uh, give the best performance. You'll also need motor extension wires uh, so that your motor wires can reach to your ESC in the fuselage. Now, these are included in the speed build kit if you're getting that, but if you're scratch building, you will need to buy these separately. Also, if you're using a 4-channel receiver, you will need a Y harness for this build. Without further ado, let's get into the build. First, we'll start by removing all the foam tabs from these pieces. Make sure when you go over the score cuts with your razor blade that you don't cut through the back of the paper. Now take a straight edge like a ruler. If it has a cork backing, make sure that the cork is facing up so that you get a clean crease. Place your straight edge at the etch marks and bend the foam to establish a crease. Now we'll need to do a B-fold. A B-fold is where the side plate rests beside the bottom plate. Do this on both sides. Now that we've test fitted it, let's glue one side at a time, focusing our glue on the side of the bottom piece. You can use the dihedral gauge as a right angle gauge to make sure that the sides are at 90 degrees to the bottom plate. Do the same process on both sides. For each step, you'll want to allow about 45 seconds for the glue to harden. We'll let you know if any steps need any more time. Now we can move on to the next piece. We'll need to remove the paper from this middle section. It's good to go over the score cuts with the razor blade to make sure that the paper comes off cleanly. If you haven't yet, you'll want to remove this middle tab, making sure not to cut through the paper on the back. Use a barbecue skewer or small screwdriver to dig it out. If you're building with the optional disc magnets, dig this foam out and drop in your magnet. If you don't have these magnets and you'd like to add this to your build, there's a link in our description below to purchase them from our store. Follow it up with a small bead of glue around the outside to hold it in. Now I'll take our straight edge and crease the etch lines. Now we can form this piece with our fingers, bending it until it follows the same curve as the side plates. Once we've checked our fit, we can glue it in, making sure only to apply glue to the back portion. Glue both sides to 90 degrees. Once this cools, we can bend back our top piece to apply glue along the inside. Put glue on the sides of the bottom plate as well as to this hinge. Once this cools down, we can test fit the first tab. Now let's open that back up and apply glue to the sides and the bottom of the first tab. Put it on the table and roll it up on its nose for a nice tight fit. Now we can do the same thing to the next tab. Let's apply glue to the sides and the bottom of this tab and we can use the table as our friend. Roll it over to apply even pressure, hanging the back end of the piece off the table so you don't damage these tabs. Once this cools down, we can join our two pieces. Crimp down these two tabs with your fingers to make it easier to install. Line up these tabs with the tab cutouts on the other piece and check for a good fit. Once we've tested our pieces, we can apply glue to the back side of the tabs, and then for about two inches on the other side of these tabs. We'll also apply glue to the inside of the side cheeks of the larger piece. While you're gluing this in, make sure that the top of the piece is flush with the sides and that you apply firm pressure inwards to both sides. Now we can move on to this piece. Start by removing these two foam tabs from the top and these four middle tabs, making sure to leave the paper on the back side. You can also punch out this hole for our motor wires. Now we need to remove the paper from the middle section. Gently go over the score cuts if you need to and peel it away. Next, apply a bead of glue to the base of these paper tabs. Apply enough glue so that as we roll it over on the table, the glue will squeeze out enough to glue the whole tab down. First, we'll want to roll it up at 90 degrees and hold it for about 15 seconds on the table. Then roll it over flat, making sure to move the piece around so it doesn't get glued down. Do the same thing to the other side. Using the edge of the table, we'll roll the foam over, giving a nice curve. Before we can attach this piece to the fuselage, we need to make our formers. Remove the center tabs from each and glue them over in a C-fold. A C-fold is where you fold the foam over 180 degrees like a clam. On the two formers with notches, be sure not to cover the notches with glue. Now 
Now we can install the formers onto the fuselage. The two formers with the notches will go in the front two tabs and the other former will go in the rear tab. Apply a bead of glue on each side of the tab and insert the formers. Now that we have those cooled, we can take a popsicle stick and open up these notches. Before we test fit this piece, pinch all four tabs on the fuselage so they lock in easily. Now we can do a test fit. Now that we've done a test fit, let's glue this in. We'll do this one side at a time. Start with applying glue to the side, making sure not to go past the last former. Set the piece in place and apply firm pressure. Allow this about a minute to dry. Next, we need to roll this over our formers. Apply glue to the front half of the back former and glue on the other formers, again, avoiding glue over the notches. Also apply glue to the side. Roll this piece firmly on the table to the other side and apply firm pressure as it cools. Allow this about a minute to dry. Now let's grab this piece and remove the foam tabs from the back. You can also pop out the cockpit hole. Now let's remove the paper from the center of this piece. Now just like on the last piece, you'll want to take this to the edge of the table to roll it. As you do this, move the wider side of the piece further so that your curve tapers. Now we can glue this down, again one side at a time. Apply glue to this joint and along the side down to the back. Line up the side of this piece along the etch line. Also make sure that the bottom of the two pieces are flush. Give this about a minute to dry. Now we can test fit this piece by rolling it over on the table and applying firm pressure. Make sure that you support the back portion of this piece with your hand because otherwise it'll crinkle. To check that this fits, make sure that it's lining up with the etch line and that this piece is flush at the seam. Once you've checked the fit, apply glue to the former and the other side. Use firm pressure while you're rolling over on the table, making sure that it lines up like before. Give this about a minute and a half to cool down. Now apply glue to the sides of this piece. Put it on the table and hold it in place for it to dry. Make sure you apply pressure uh, down onto the table and in from the sides. Allow this about a minute to cool down. Next, we're gonna install our ESC. If you wanna go the extra mile to protect your electronics, you can waterproof this ESC. We have a video linked in the description below on how to do this. Hot glue doesn't adhere well to the ESC, so we'll use some double-sided sticky tape to stick it down. Apply a couple of strips and mount the ESC to the inside of the fuselage in this section here with your battery lead coming out of the front and the other wires coming out of the back. Make sure the ESC doesn't protrude out of the front or the back of this area. Next, we'll need this piece to seal off the front. Remove the foam tab from the edge, and if you're using the optional magnets, dig out the foam from this cavity. Drop your magnet in and follow it up with a bead of glue to seal it in. Now this is a bit of a difficult piece to install, so you'll want to do a test fit. First, crimp down on this tab and run the battery wires through this hole. Once you're happy with the fit, we can remove this piece and apply glue to the bottom on either side of the tab, as well as the top. Don't worry about the sides, we'll seal those up later. Again, run your battery wire through this hole and seat it in place. Be careful during this part because it's easy to burn yourself on the hot glue. You can bring this piece to the edge of the table and press it down firmly to get a nice snug fit. Now we can seal up the sides with a bead of hot glue. Wipe off the excess glue with a piece of scrap foam. Now let's seal up the back side of this area with this piece. We'll start by removing the foam tabs. Now apply a bead of glue to this paper tab, roll it up on the table, hold it there for about 15 seconds, and then roll it flat. 
Again, move this around on the table so it doesn't glue itself down. Before we install this piece, we'll want to attach our motor lead extensions. This will make it easier to glue it in without burning yourself. We'll also want to crimp down this tab. Thread the motor extensions and servo wire through the hole. And we'll test put this piece in place. Once we're happy with the fit, we can apply glue to either side of this tab and along the front edges of this piece. Press it firmly in place to glue it down. Now we can remove the motor extension wires and put them aside for later. Next we'll need to glue this flap down. Apply glue to all the sides as well as the flat surface. Just fold this piece over, put it on the table and apply firm pressure downwards and in from the sides. Push the fuselage backwards so the piece is firmly down and doesn't glue on the table. Next we can install our servos in the fuselage. Don't worry about putting the servo screws in because we'll have to take those out later anyways. You can go ahead and send your servos now. If you don't know how to do that, we have a video teaching you how to in the description below. I'm going to go ahead and put these in. Make sure that the servo wires are coming out of the front. Now that we've made sure our servos fit, we can pull them back out, drop a bead of glue under each tab and push them back down. Now we can grab three push rods and thread these through these holes. First, we'll need to widen these slots so that they fit comfortably. Do this for the two slots on the top as well. Now we can thread in the push rod for our rudder. I usually find it easier to start with the side with the Z-bend. Now while you're pushing this through, your push rod might catch on the foam like this. If it does that, just rotate it like so, so that slides nice and smoothly. Now we can take the Z-bend and thread it out of the opposite side of the side that we threaded it into. Now we'll do the same thing for our elevator push rods. Now for our elevator, we're going to use two push rods. This is because our elevator itself doesn't have a straight hinge, so it has to have two connections. One of these push rods will go through like this, crossing with the rudder push rod, and the other elevator push rod will just go straight out like so. So if you did this all right, you should end up with one push rod going from the rudder servo to the right side of the plane, and two push rods going from the elevator servo, one on either side. Now we can grab our tail pieces and start by doing a bevel on all the hinges. On the rudder, let's do a 45 degree single bevel on the rudder side. Be careful not to cut through the back side of the paper, but if you do, don't worry, just add a piece of tape later. We're also going to do a single side 45 degree bevel on the elevator. Master. Now we can go ahead and reinforce our hinges with a bead of hot glue, making sure that we have a scrap piece of foam on hand to scrape off the excess. Leave the hinge open to dry or else you might glue your control surface shut. Now before we install our tail, we have to cut out this slot for our rudder. So to cut this out, we'll just line it up with a straight edge and cut it out with a razor blade. Now we can take our vertical stabilizer and crimp down this part so that it slides on the fuselage easier. When you slide this in, make sure that the hinge line lines up with the back of the fuselage and that the tail is nice and straight up. Once we're happy with the fit, we can apply glue to this piece on the tail and on the sides of this cutout in the fuselage. Once again, check that the hinge line is flush with the back of the plane and that the tail is pointing straight up. Now we can also follow up with a bead of glue on either side of the tail. Now we take a horizontal stabilizer and slide it in the tab on the vertical stabilizer. Put a bead of glue on all four sides of this seam and wipe off the excess glue with a scrap piece of foam. 
As this cools, make sure that it's sitting at 90 degrees to the rudder. Now let's reinforce our horizontal stabilizer with some popsicle sticks. First, you want to insert the popsicle stick on the horizontal stabilizer side, making sure to leave the paper on the back side. And then rock it over towards the fuselage and insert it into the fuselage slot. Do the same thing to the other side. Once again, check that it's sitting at 90 degrees before we glue the popsicle sticks in. We'll apply a dab of glue on each of these popsicle stick corners and wipe out the excess with a scrap piece of foam. Before we install our rudder control horn, we have to identify which push rod is the rudder push rod. So look inside the fuselage, uh, look on the side that only has one push rod and move that one. That's going to be your rudder push rod. Now we're going to thread this through the outermost hole on the control horn and seat it in place. Have the push rod positioned so that the main part of the push rod is coming out of the bottom of the control horn. Now let's move on to the other side of the push rod. We want to make sure first that the servo arm is sitting at 90 degrees to the servo case. And we'll have to make sure that the rudder is completely flat. Now we can go in the fuselage and mark with our finger where the Z bend should be. Pull that out a bit and bend it with a pair of pliers. Bend this 90 degrees down towards the fuselage. We can also remove the control horn now from the back and slide the push rod forward to give us more room to play with. To complete our Z bend, Grab the push rod like this and bend it 90 degrees. Now we can chop off the excess and bend it another 90 degrees to make it straight. Now we can push this back in, take off our servo arm, and insert this Z-bend into the farthest hole. Tighten. Okay. Now we can also glue in our control horn. Let's reinforce this control horn on either side with a bead of glue. We can wipe off the excess with a scrap piece of foam. Now let's move on to our elevator linkages. Let's start off with just one side of the elevator and insert the push rod into the outermost hole on the control horn. Now let's identify which push rod this is in the fuselage. Mark where we need to put the Z-bend. Make sure that the elevator is flat while you're doing this and bend it down 90 degrees. Again, we can take out our control horn and push the push rod forward so we have more room to work with. Do the rest of the Z-Bend just as before. Now let's do our elevator on the other side, but this time we're going to thread our push rod through the middle hole. Follow the same process as before. Now let's remove our elevator servo arm and thread these push rods in. So the reason why we install the push rods in different holes for the elevator control horns is that we can't put both push rods in the same hole here on the servo side. So to compensate for that, we'll just install them in offset holes to make our throw even. Now identify which push rod was in the outermost hole and put that in the outermost hole on the servo arm as well. The other push rod will go in the middle hole. Now we can go ahead and glue in our elevator control horns. And just like on the rudder, we can reinforce them with hot glue. Before we move on to the next step, make sure that you put your servo screws in now so you don't forget them later. Now we need to check to make sure that both our elevators sit at the same angle. If they don't, bend the longer push rod so that they sit the same. To determine which push rod we need to bend, just look at which elevator is higher up. In this case, it's my left elevator. So I'll need to put a little bend in this push rod to make this push rod effectively short. Keep on adjusting this until they match. So now that we put the bend in, both the elevators sit at the same angle. Now let's move on to our wings, and the first thing we're going to do is do a double bevel on the leading edge. Now we'll also need to cut out this relief right here for our aileron. You'll need to cut out this hole for your servo. Now let's crack this open and do a bevel. Now let's pop out these two holes for our motor wires. Now let's remove the center foam tab from the spar. Now we'll need to do a C-fold on our spar. Cool. 
And before we glue our spar in, let's take the tip of a barbecue skewer and run it through these two score cuts. Line up the angled side of the spar with the root of the wing and make sure that it's facing the right direction. Now apply a healthy bead of glue on the back side of the spar, which is the side without the cutout for the ailerons, and glue it in place. Move the spar around on the wing so that the glue dries nice and evenly. Now we're going to apply hot glue on the leading edge, across the spar, and a little bit on the trailing edge of the wing. Hold this in place for a good minute and a half. Now you can crack open the aileron hinge and reinforce it with a bead of hot glue. Now let's grab your servo and thread the servo wire behind the spar. Make sure that your servo is centered and that the arm is pointing 90 degrees straight up. Once you've tested your servo, you can take it back out, apply a bead of glue, and glue it in. Now we'll need to thread our servo wire through this hole. Let's move around the servo wire so that we can see it through that hole. And then poke it with a barbecue skewer through the back. Once we have a little loop, we can just loop that and pull the rest of it out. Repeat the same process on the other wing. Now that our two wings are done, we're ready to join them together. First, we'll need a thread extension through this hole for our servo wires. Put the larger end of an extension facing towards the front of the wing. Slide that in, and then we can rotate it out and slide it out from here. Now we can connect this extension and pull our servo wire through the hole. Let's grab a piece of packing tape and tape our two wings together. Before we glue our wing together, we'll need to fold over the servo arms so that they don't interfere with the wings sitting flush on the table. To get the right angle for our dihedral, we're going to use this dihedral gauge and just put it under one of the wing tips. Put the dihedral gauge under the side with the servo wire hole because the other side will sit more flush on the table. When we're happy with that, we can put glue inside the wing joint and glue them together. Give this a good minute and a half to dry. Now we can seal off the top of the wing with packing tape. We can go ahead and install our linkages. We can go ahead and pop in a control horn in the control horn slot. And we can rotate our servo arm back up with some needle nose pliers. So we can thread our push rod through the middle hole of the control horn. Line up your aileron so that it's flush with the rest of the wing. And mark where you need to put the Z-bend on the servo arm. And we're going to do this on the outermost hole on the servo arm. Bend it 90 degrees towards the center of the wing and complete the rest of the Z-band just as we did before. Now we can glue our control horn in. Let's repeat the same process for the other aileron. Now that our wing's done, we're ready to attach this to the fuselage. To attach the wing to our fuselage, we'll need these two pieces with the straight cutouts. So we can pop these cutouts out and remove the foam tabs from each end. Now let's take a couple of popsicle sticks and stick them through these notches. So before we glue our popsicle sticks in, we'll need to make sure that they match the angle on this piece. Uh, now make sure you grab the right piece. You'll have the paper tabs on the back side folding inwards and the part with the uh, steeper angle towards the back. Let's match these up here. Now let's take our popsicle sticks back out and glue them in. Smash the angle of this piece as close as you can with the popsicle sticks. Before we glue this piece in, we'll need to bevel the shorter side. This beveled side will face upwards when we glue it in. Now we can apply glue on the bottom of this piece and along the sides where the popsicle sticks will be.
Now let's take a scrap piece of foam to help us fold over these paper tabs. Just apply a bead of glue at the base and roll it over with the scrap piece of foam. Make sure there's enough glue under the tab so that it glues nice and cleanly to the popsicle stick. Now, repeat the same process on the other side. Let's take a pair of pliers or flush cutters and trim these popsicle sticks down so they only stick out about a quarter inch. Now we're going to insert these popsicle stick tabs into these notches right here. Just one side at a time. Let's take this back out and glue it in. Apply a bead of glue atop the cross of both bevel pieces and put it down in just like we did before. Make sure that it sits flush with the wing on both sides. We can follow up on each side with a bead of glue to reinforce it. Now let's thread these aileron wires through this hole on the top of the fuselage all the way through to this hole on the bottom. If you haven't secured your extension wire together with glue, you can do that now so it holds together. Next, we'll build our motor pod. We'll start out with this piece and remove all the foam tabs. Now, we can do a B-fold on these two sides as indicated. Next, we'll need to establish a crease along this etch line. So just rotate this up flat on the table and establish a little crease. So next, let's install our firewall. It's important to note that we're gonna install it this way with the holes for the barbecue skewers pointing out towards the open cavity. Let's apply a bead of glue and glue it in. Now let's reinforce this with a piece of tape. Put it right onto the firewall and wrap it around the sides. Now we can go back in on the inside and reinforce the edges of the firewall with a bead of hot glue. Now let's grab these two doubler pieces right here and establish a crease along these etch lines. So when we put these on, we'll have to make sure that the flat side is up against the table and that the crease is lined up with the back side of this motor pod. Now we're just going to put glue on the side of this piece for now and we'll worry about the back later. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Now that the glue is dry, we can crack open this hinge, apply glue on either side, and in between the hinge. Rotate this flat on the table, and make sure that it sits flush while also putting pressure in from the sides. For the next step, we'll need this piece here. Let's remove the paper from the center section, again tracing over the etch lines if they aren't deep enough. Now we can take this piece to the edge of the table and roll over the section without paper so that we get a nice smooth curve. When we glue this on, make sure that you line up the flat piece right here with this line. And down here, this piece should extend past about the width of a piece of foam. So lined up at the top. Now let's go ahead and do a test fit on the other side. Just roll this over and look down through here to line it up with the piece of paper. All right, once we're happy with that fit, we can go ahead and apply glue to the side and fold it over. Now let's move on to the back. For the back, we'll need this piece here. Again, remove the paper from the center section of the foam. Now I'll take this piece to the edge of the table and curve the middle section. Now just like the back portion of the fuselage, we'll want to roll the wider part of this piece farther than the shorter part. Alright, so to test fit this, 
Let's line up this edge with the edge of the paper on one side and roll it over onto the other side. Now that we've test fit it, let's glue this in. We're only gonna apply glue to one side first. So just apply glue right along this joint and along the side of the back. Now let's go ahead and do a test fit on the other side. To finish this off, we'll need to put a bead of glue around the top of this piece and along the side of this piece. Fold this over until this edge is flush and also this bottom edge is flush. Then just move around the top pieces so that they line up nicely together. So before we put the front piece on, let's go ahead and install our motor. If your motor has a shaft or anything sticking out of the back, we'll need to remove this little piece of tape. Also, it's nice to poke the tape in these four holes for your screws. Now that we have our motor installed, we can put this front piece on. Once again, we're gonna remove the paper from the center piece and roll it on the edge of the table to establish a nice smooth curve. Now, since the angle on this front piece is a little more aggressive, we're gonna to need to do a slight bevel around the whole edge to knock the edge off. Supply glue just right along this edge. So to make this a little bit easier, we're only gonna glue the first part for now. Now while you're holding this in place, I'll roll the rest over so that you can establish that angle. Give this a good minute to dry. Now we can crack this open and glue the rest. Give this a good minute to dry. Now we need this piece to seal off the bottom of our motor pod. Go ahead and remove the foam tabs from the outside. Now we can knock out this little hole for our motor wires. We'll also need to remove the paper from the inside, but leaving it on the back side. Now we're gonna take this piece to the edge of the table and roll it to give a nice smooth curve. And before we glue this on, we'll need to install our motor extension wires onto the motor because we can't get to this easily later. Now let's thread these wires through this hole. And now we're ready to glue this in place. Let's do a quick test fit. Once we're happy with the fit, we can apply glue to both sides of this piece. as well as inside on the doubles. You can flip this over and put it on the table. And avoiding those motor wires, we can roll this on the table to establish that curve, both the front and the back. To make our motor pod standoffs, we'll need these two pieces. Let's pop up the foam tab in the middle and the foam tabs on the sides. We'll also need to bevel both this side and this side on this piece. Make sure you're beveling on the opposite side from the paper tabs. Now there's three layers of foam on the side, so we're gonna to wanna to use a razor blade to poke out this notch. Make sure that you're going past a 45 degree angle, maybe into a 50 or a 55. Let's do the same thing to the back. On the back one, we want to also angle the knife forward a bit. Now let's insert a popsicle stick into each of these notches. And just like we did before on the fuselage, we'll need to grab one of these pieces to make sure that we have the angles right. Once again, the steeper angle will go towards the rear of the motor pod and the paper tabs will be on the outside folded in. So we're happy with that, we can glue these popsicle sticks in place. Now we can glue this piece in as well. Just apply glue along this bevel and along the sides where the popsicle sticks will be. Let's fold over these paper tabs just like we did before. Do the same thing to the back one. 
Once again, we'll use a pair of pliers or flush cutters to trim these popsicle sticks down so they only stick out about a quarter inch. All right, let's install our motor pod on the wing just as we did before with the fuselage. Once we're happy with the fit, let's take this back out and glue it in. So just apply a bead of glue on both sides on the beveled part of this piece. We can go back across this piece with a bead of glue to reinforce it. Now let's thread the motor wires through the hole in the wing. Now let's do the same thing, but with the holes through the fuselage. Now we can connect these motor wires to the ESC. Now let's test motor direction, and we're going to need to plug everything into the receiver. Since I'm running the ailerons on a six channel receiver and I'm not using Y harness, I'm going to need to set up dual ailerons on the transmitter. So with Spectrum, just go to System Setup, Aircraft Type, Wing, Dual Ailerons. All right, let's uh, test motor direction. Right now our motor is spinning clockwise, looking from the front. We want the spinning counterclockwise, so what I'm going to do is just reverse any of these two motor leads and it should go in the right direction. Now we can secure our receiver down with a dab of glue. I've got my servo screws in, I've got the receiver in, I have my antennas placed the way I want them to be. Uh, I've got my wires all, all managed nice and clean as you can see, so we're ready to seal the bottom of this fuselage up. To seal up the back of the fuselage, we'll need this piece here. Go ahead and remove all the foam tabs. Now let's go ahead and test fit this piece. Alright, let's go ahead and glue this in. We're going to apply glue all around the sides and on this little back tab. Let's flip this over onto the table and hold it down in place. Applying pressure downwards and in from the sides. Move it around a little bit on the table so that it doesn't glue itself down. That way you can also seal this up by the step with a bead of glue. And as always, wipe off the excess with a scrap piece of foam. Now, let's put the plane aside and work on our nose. To build our nose, let's start out with this piece right here. Go ahead and remove all the foam tabs. Next, we'll use our ruler to crease these pieces along the edge lines. Now let's do a B fold as indicated. Apply glue along the whole length, skipping over the tab, and fold it up in a B fold. Do the same thing on the other side. For the next step, we'll need this piece right here. Let's start by removing these foam tabs from the back. Now let's remove the paper from the center piece. We'll also need to remove these two foam tabs, but make sure you leave the paper on the back. Now we can glue over these paper tabs using the same technique as we used before. Now we can take this piece to the edge of the table and curve this section. Now let's install this piece by first crimping down these two tabs and using the same process that we used on the fuselage. Let's do a test roll and a boom. Alright, once we're happy with the fit, let's go ahead and apply glue to one side. and repeat the same process on the other side. Now let's grab this piece and remove the foam tab from the back. We'll also need to remove the paper from the center section of this piece. Now let's do a test fit. We're going to line up the bottom of this piece with the etch line here. And roll this over. 
do the same thing on the other side. To glue it on, we're just going to apply glue on the side of this piece and the side of this piece. We're also going to apply glue right here on the paper tab. Once that's dry, we can glue the rest of it by applying a bead of glue on this back paper tab and on the side of this piece. To finish off the front of the nose, we'll need this little mustache piece right here. Remove the foam tab from the back of the mustache. Let's also remove the paper from the center of this piece. Take this piece to the edge of the table and roll it over just like we did before. Now since this piece has a more extreme angle when we fold it, we'll need to cut some reliefs in this paper tab. Let's start by cutting reliefs uh, right here and right here, and we'll cut some more reliefs, each space about a quarter inch apart. Now let's take these paper tabs and just fold them backwards so they're out of our way. We'll also need to bevel this piece slightly with a razor blade. All around. Now let's go ahead and test fit this piece. So to glue this on, we're just going to do it on one side for now. Just apply a little bit of glue on the paper tab and press that down on the table. Now we have a little hinge where we can pop this open, apply glue, and then seal it back up. Let's put glue all around this piece here and fold the mustache over. Now for the remaining paper tabs that aren't glued down, we'll go ahead and apply a little bit of glue under each one and fold them over. Use a scrap piece of foam to do this so you don't burn yourself. To seal up the bottom of the nose piece, we're going to need this piece right here. So first, remove all the foam tabs. Now if you're using magnets on your hatch, you're also going to need to dig out this little circular hole. Just make sure that you leave the paper on the back side. Okay. Regardless of whether you're using a magnet or not, you'll need to take off the paper from this piece. To make sure that we have the right side of the magnet, we can take a piece of tape, lay it over our other magnet, sticky side up, and let the other magnet stick to it. This way when we pull the magnet off, we know which side it's on. Now for this magnet, we're going to want it as close to the top surface as possible. So we're going to put our glue in first. Put some hot glue down inside the hole and then take your piece of tape with a magnet on it and stick the magnet into the hole with the glue. Leave it there for about a minute to dry. Now let's go ahead and seal off the back with this paper tab. Use the same process that we've used before. Now let's take this piece to the edge of the table as well and give it a nice curve. This curve will be pretty gradual towards the base, but will get more extreme towards the tip because it needs to match this curve right here. Let's do a quick test fit. Lined up at the back and roll it forward. Okay, pretty happy with the fit, so let's glue it in. We're going to want to put glue on the doublers on the inside of this piece and all around the edge of this piece. Press this firmly on the table and apply pressure from the sides as well. And just roll it up onto the tip to get a nice smooth curve. Now it's all glued together on the bottom and all I have to do is trim off the excess paper on the outside. Now to seal off this part of the back end, we're going to need this piece right here. Let's go ahead and remove both foam tabs. Once again, if you're using the magnets, uh, dig out this hole right here, again, leaving the paper on the back side. All right, so for this piece, since we're seating the magnet uh, inside, the tape technique won't work. So let's go ahead and put this right up against there. 
and drop that magnet in. Once we've got the magnet seated in, we'll follow it up with a bead of glue around the outside. And to glue this piece in, we're going to put a bead of glue all around the outside and seat it in this slot. I'm going to flip this over on the table and use it as our friend. Now our nose hatch piece is done. We can test fit it on our fuselage. To build our pontoons, we're going to need these two pieces and these four doublers. We'll start off by removing our foam tabs. We'll need to remove the paper from the etch line forward. Apply a bead of glue on the back of the doubler and glue it down. Leave about a width of the foam gap around the hole outside. Do the same thing on the other doubler. Now let's give this piece a bit of a curve just using our fingers. Now we can go ahead and do our b-fold right here just with the back portion. Apply glue to the side of the bottom plate as well as the doubler. Do the same thing on the other side. Let's go ahead and test fit this piece real quick. Just lay it flat on the table and roll this over. Now since this is a pretty long piece, we're only going to do the front half first. Apply glue on the doublers, also apply some glue inside the hinge and the side of the piece. And we'll fold that over. Next, let's crack the rest of this open and glue the rest of it down. Apply glue on the doublers and the side of the piece. Roll this on the table so it's nice and flush. Now let's take the excess and do a score cut right along the back edge. I'm going to peel this foam off, leaving the paper behind, and we're going to glue the paper over so that it's nice and clean. Apply a healthy bead of glue in here and fold it over on the table. Now we can slice off the excess paper. Do the same thing with the other pontoon. Now that we have both our pontoons done, we can move on to these two pieces here. We can pop out the middle piece of foam and remove the foam tabs from the ends. We also need to grab two popsicle sticks for each pontoon. We'll slide these in the notches, like so. And once again, we'll use one of these pieces to match our angles. Now to get the right piece, make sure that the shorter side is facing toward the curved side of the pontoon, and that looking from the side with the two holes, that the paper is on the back side. Once we're happy with how that looks, we can glue these in. Make sure that you leave at least about an eighth or a quarter of an inch of the popsicle stick protruding out of the top. Now let's glue this piece in. We'll need to apply glue on the curved side and the sides where the popsicle sticks contact. Now let's glue these paper tabs over just as we did on the other pieces. Let's go ahead and trim down these popsicle sticks if they're too long, uh, so they're only protruding out at most a quarter of an inch. Let's repeat the same process on the other pontoon. Now when you're putting these in, make sure that the popsicle sticks are facing the inside, so the outside of it looks nice and clean. Now we're going to need to cut some barbecue skewers. We'll need two pieces cut to five inches, and two other pieces cut to five inches and three quarters. So one of the five inch pieces is going to go in the front two holes, stick it in one side, and the other. Then we'll put one of the five and three quarters inches pieces in the back. If you need to, poke through the doubler of the pontoon with a barbecue skewer. Now make sure that this piece is straight up relative to the fuselage and not the wing since we have some dihedral in the wing. This will make sure that when this plane sits in the water, the pontoons are nice and flat. Now let's take everything out and glue it back in. Get off of me. Apply a dab of glue on each one of these barbecue skewers to hold it in. Wipe off the excess with a scrap piece of foam. Do the same thing with the other pontoon. So now let's go ahead and seal off this cockpit hole. We're going to need this piece of post board right here. So before we put this in, we're going to put packing tape over it so it's nice and waterproof. And we can trim off the excess. 
Now let's curve this piece with our fingers, making sure that the tape side is facing inwards. And before we install this in the cockpit hole, uh, we're going to need to do a slight bevel on this piece here. Since this fuselage piece right here is curved at an angle, uh, these pieces aren't exactly flat, so we have to cut those straight up and down. Now we can go ahead and test fit our piece. Make sure that when this piece is wrapped all the way flush around the cockpit hole, that you still have a little bit of overlap here. So to glue this in, we're just going to apply a bead of glue around the rim of the cockpit hole and slide this in. As you're gluing this in, press outwards from inside with your fingers to make sure that it's nice and flush on the outside. Once that's dry, we can follow up with the razor blade and trim off the excess. Now we can follow up on the inside at the base with the bead of glue all the way around and scrape off the excess with a scrap piece of foam. Now we can also put in our little windshield. Let's also cover this piece on both sides with packing tape. And we can trim off the excess. To fold this, we'll use a straight edge to help. Again, if there's cork, lay it down cork upwards. Do the same thing on the other side. I like how it looks about there, so let's go ahead and glue it down. Just apply a bead of glue along the inside of the bottom edge. You can always follow up with a bead of glue on the inside for reinforcement. You can reach in and wipe off any of the excess with a popsicle stick. Now in Porco's plane, he had some cooling fins for the radiator on his uh, motor pod. These are optional, you can install them if you like the looks of them, so we're going to go ahead and do that now. First, you'll find two of these pieces that have tabs in them, go ahead and pop them out. Next, you're going to have to choose how many of these you want to use. Uh, you can use just one, two, or all three of them. Jeremy likes all three, so we're going to do that. One way to make sure that they're facing the right direction is if you have the speed build kit, there's little tabs from uh, the laser, so just line up these tabs and glue it together. Go ahead and apply glue on the back of the one with the tab, and glue them together. And we're going to glue the third one to the back as well. Now we can take this piece, crimp down the flat side with our fingers, insert it, and glue it in. Make sure that when you're gluing this in, that the shorter side of this piece is pointing towards the pointy side of the triangle. Repeat the same process with the other cooling fin. So to glue these cooling fins on, just apply a bead of glue on the back of the mounting tab and put it where you think it looks good. Jeremy likes it here, so that's where we'll glue it. Hold this in place for a good minute to dry. Make sure you match this one with the position on the other side. Now let's take a scrap piece of foam, cut out a 90 degree notch in it, and use this to help us glue our seams together to make sure that our plane is watertight. Apply a bead of glue along the seams and use your scrap piece of foam to squeegee it in. You can do multiple passes if you need to. Do this for all the seams. Take your time and do one small section at a time. When your right angle squeegee gets globbed up with glue, you can go ahead and make new ones. Make sure that when you do this with your nose hatch, you're not gluing it to the fuselage. Also make sure you seal up your pontoons. So I'm just checking for uh, my control surface directions. Looks like I need to reverse elevator and rudder. Now let's install a piece of Velcro for a battery. I've put the fuzzy side of the Velcro inside the fuselage. We can also put our prop on. Be sure to unplug your battery first. For this plane, we recommend a nine inch prop. A 10 inch prop will also work, but a larger prop will give you more torque, which is not what you want with this plane. Now let's check our CG. I'm gonna be using a 1300 three cell to balance this out. There's two dots on the bottom of the wings as your CG indicators. Just pick up the plane by these two dots and the plane should sit flat. Now one last step before we fly this thing is to install Porco. We found this Porco keychain on Amazon. If you want to buy it, we'll have it linked in the description below. We're going to start by removing his little keychain and hot glue him into the pilot seat. Alright guys, we finished up the FTC Angel. Now we're ready for a maiden. Well, that's pretty good. Now this plane will stall if you pull back too far and you're going too slow. So just watch out for that on uh, landings especially. Other than that, it's a great flying plane. 
Yeah, you can do some fun stuff with it, especially with the ailerons. And uh, complete four channel control. Be your first water plane too. You've never flown off of the water before. You can just have some fun with it. Looks great flying through the air too. All right, let's put her in for a landing. There we go. All right guys, so that was our maiden of the FTC Angel from Porco Rosso. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.